Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Derek Hunt and I make inspirational videos all about stained glass. And today is a tutorial on how to use dip pens. Dipping pens are a great alternative to working with brushes when it comes to making marks on glass. And I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step guide on how to mix the pigment and how to use a dipping pen to get great results just for you. Hello and welcome to my studio. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. It is fabulous to see you. And if you're new to the channel, I make inspirational videos all about stained glass, from designing through to painting through to making stained glass windows. I interview fellow creatives in the field of glass who are doing exciting and interesting things. If that appeals to you, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel because I make new content on a very regular basis. So with that said, let's get into the tutorial on how to use a dipping pen and here are some of the materials that you're going to need to get started. So what is a dipping pen? Well unlike a fountain pen which contains the ink within the body of the pen, a dipping pen is simply a handle that holds a nib. You can buy nibs from a variety of locations and I will leave links in the description below to a variety of suppliers. The nibs simply are pushed into the body of the handle in a really simple easy way like this and so they're interchangeable and you can swap and change. The dipping part of it is when you dip that nib into a well of ink. Now it could be Indian ink, it could be drawing ink. In this instance it is vitreous paints which are made with a medium suitable for firing onto glass and you can then just draw on the glass in the same way that you draw on paper. It's really liberating and if you if you don't like working with brushes or simply want to get something that's a bit more precise a dipping pen is the way forward. You can get really detailed lines and it is just great to work with and very intuitive. So what else will we need? We will need a mixing palette. I usually use a glass palette uh, with some stoppers underneath. Our trusted palette knife, of course. The paint that we're using today is Roish paint, which is fantastic. Tracing black and American paint, really nice to work with. The main medium for mixing is clove oil, but also we'll be adding a little bit of lavender oil. This is personal preference, but I like to add a little bit of lavender oil to it. A kilner jar or an equivalent jar that's airtight is really useful as well together with your dipping pen of choice. So don't forget a couple of pipettes as well for mixing the oils together. You don't want the same pipette for different oils. So you'd mix your paint in the same way that you'd mix with water, grinding it very carefully of course. Even although the Roche paints are particularly well made, you still have to grind them for a good five minutes before you can put them into the jar. To this we'll then add our oil. I'm adding approximately twice as much clove oil as I am lavender oil, using different pipettes of course so that they don't contaminate both the containers of oil. Once we've got an uh, a reasonable amount of oil in. We mix and we mix until everything is well mixed in and then you leave it for 24 hours. Don't use the pigment until it's sat for 24 hours. Okay, now we're ready to experiment with the consistency of it. After giving it a good mix again, we're just going to test the pigment. So generally speaking, you should be able to get four or five lengths out of a dip into the pigment. Um, as you can see here, it's working particularly well. We need to make sure that the pigment is strong um, and that it's consistent. Too much oil and it'll become a little bit too watery and too little oil, it'll become too thick. So um, also just fill in some of the areas with large areas of pigment and let that sit for a few minutes because if there's too much oil, what you tend to find is the pigment draws into the center and doesn't have a nice dense finish. But that appears to be all working well. So we're ready to start actually drawing with it. And as a little extra tip, find a saucer such as this that you can angle your jar at by creating a little well of vitreous paint. It's a lot easier to introduce the nib and to load the nib when the jar is at an angle. So have fun playing with the pen. It really works in the same way that you would imagine drawing on paper. You vary the pressure of the nib to create thin lines and thick lines. 
just be careful not to overload the nib because you'll get a blob of paint on the surface of the glass if you do. Don't worry, it is not the end of the world if you create issues like that, like little blobs of paint and extra areas that are overfilled with pigment. What I tend to do is I uh, put my kiln on and I have it at a low setting, sort of 50 degrees, and I put my painted pieces in to dry and within about 40 minutes or so, all of the vitreous paints have dried and then they can be scratched back in the way that you'd scratch back paint normally with uh, painting with brushes. It's, it's a really kind of easy method to use, just to allow the paint to dry completely and then you can scratch it back. After you've fired the first layer, the tracing layers with the nib, you can then add additional layers by putting uh, washes of pigment over the surface and texturizing it in the way that you would normally with regular brushwork. Uh, you can create lots of interesting effects and the graphic quality of the nib helps to create a quite a unique and exciting graphic uh, design style which is really unique to the nib. You can also add stains obviously to that. Here I'm adding silver stains mixed with glycol. Glycol is very good for blending. You can use a little badger brush like this to blend the stain to create different effects. You can scratch it out. You can also use a nib with silver stain, believe it or not as well. This is a glycol mixture with silver stain. It's something that I don't use tremendously often because I'm, I don't think the results are great, but it does work if you want to play around with it. And here are the finished pieces drawn with a nib, shaded with texturizing and then stained on top. So hopefully you enjoyed today's session. Um, it's really nice being able to show you these techniques. I'd encourage you to experiment and play around with ideas. Leave comments and suggestions for future videos and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.